Hi guys, welcome to my video, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is actually my first video on YouTube where I'm also presenting something instead of just drawing. And I really want to thank you for joining in. Um, I'm making this video because I've always been a fan of making portrait drawings, but sometimes it's just so frustrating to find the real likeliness in a drawing and the realistic person you've been drawing. So. I found this video on internet by Mr. Aldori, who is actually a pretty good teacher online for drawing portraits and faces from different angles. And he made this challenge, the 50 match challenge, where the idea is just you just, for 10 days straight, you draw 50 hats in total. You, you could do... Instead of just talking about it, let's jump right in and I'll show you what I've what I found out. So here you can see the Pinterest board made by Mr. Aldori, which has the 50 hats on it. I'll put a link in the description below where you can find the, the Pinterest board. And it just contains about 50 hats from uh, from different uh, angles, so uh, and different um, gender and at and ethnicity, race, just from different race that uh, that can help you um, to get a bit of grasp of, uh, of drawing portraits. So. What I did is, for 10 days straight, I drew 50 hats each day. And I didn't want to spend too long time on it, so I decided that I just want to want to work with, uh, with, um, with a blue color and, uh, and fill in um, and draw the hats. Um, next time I could spend a little more, bit more time on it and do some shading as well, but for now I just decided to do just work with a blue color. Personally, I really like working with just a blue color because it's less direct or less uh, uh, conclusive as just working with a black on a white so I decided to work with a blue it's always something I do when working uh, when working on a sketch I don't want to be too defined with it so I just work with a blue uh, with a blue color so I just want to sh uh, there's a lot of insights I made but I just want to share a couple of them uh, of them with you and the first one is that when you're training something uh, creative or or artistic we tend to just do something and then, you know, the next way you try it again. But I think the most important thing I learned or something I'm, I'm doing just a f for a couple of months right now is that each time I'm learning something new, I make notes of it. And I really, really, really advise you to do that as well when, when you're training something creative or artistic. Is each day after I made the five hats, whatever happened or whatever I felt about it, I made notes about what worked and what didn't work. So on an observational basis, not on a judgmental basis like this is not good or this is like not working or this shit, this looks like like really shitty. It doesn't matter. It's just make an observation on what you what you see and what you think about it, but not in, on a judgmental way. So make notes, make notes, make notes, make notes. Another thing I found out is when, while doing the uh, the drawings, is that there's a big difference between the drawings I made and the realistic photos seen on the board. And sometimes it, this gave me the feeling that I really drew a deformed portrait. While the next day when I was looking at it, it's, it's actually, it wasn't that bad as I thought it was. So what I, what I felt is actually that while drawing, it might look totally different than the uh, than the portrait or the portrait photo the, than the realistic photo is that actually it wasn't that bad at all so deformed something i literally wrote down is that deformed is could also be um, decisions you make in the in the way you're drawing so actually a style decision so sometimes you should just make the drawing and the next day look at it again and then actually you might think well this isn't that bad at all uh, as 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 I thought, sorry for the stuff. So this is also something that while I was doing this, I think after about three or four days uh, drawing, I kept drawing eyes the same way. I kept him putting you know big lines for the contours and for the uh, for the for very prominent things like the nose and the chin and the and the eyebrows and the eyes. But I also put in some smaller thinner lines for the shading. And uh, while doing this, I, I kind of noticed that, well, I'm first of all, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of manga. So I'm also trying to develop this, this manga style. 
But I also found I don't want to be like too manga where I'm not putting in like sketching in uh, shading lines. So I kind of found that I do want to go in the direction of manga with, with just black and white lines on it. And of course, different shade in line weight. But I'm also... I've also decided that I do want to put in some some sketchiness uh, in the shading, so thin lines for the Terminator on the shading on the face that gives away gives away like it's it's it has some more form the face than it actually has when you're not putting in these shading lines. Another thing I found out while drawing the heads is that there's different methods for drawing the head. You could like. I would highly recommend to check out Ahmed, uh, Mr. Aldori's uh, uh, channel because he he explains really well on how to draw the heads from uh, from uh, from different angles. Is that well? The first method is that you sketch in really thinly, low opacity, the placement of uh, where the face is going to be and the head is going to be. So you set the fundamentals for the whole face, and then. For example, on another layer or over that sketch, you draw in the whole face. So you know already where the eye is coming, you already know where the nose is coming, so you don't have to worry about proportions. Another way of drawing the head is that you actually don't draw in these fundament, but you just literally think or imagine where you're going to place the eye, the nose or the mouth. This is a really different method. And it's a lot harder to draw in this way because, well, there's a lot more space for mistakes because you have to do it in one time right. But if you want to do this, you could already like set dots for places where you know you're going to have to fill in the, the rest. So, for example, if you know that there's a hairline and the person has black hair, you could already like set a line or sketch in a line which gives you some marking points on where the rest of the face is going to be. So you could already like measure the hairline is this far away from the eyebrow. This eyebrow also is, is black, for example. You set in a line and then you could already like measure from there where the eye or the nose is going to be. So these different methods, I tried to do them both and I really feel like you know, one day only doing the, the, the set marking, and the, like the difficult method. And the next day I was trying out the, the easy method again. And this really gave me, a, uh, gave me a better insight on the proportions of the nose, the distance of the nose and the, and the ears, uh, and how all, like, all relates to each other. So, you know, if you're doing this challenge, I would highly recommend to, you know, try different methods and drawings and try to challenge yourself each each time when you're you're doing a different head. And another thing I really found out is that while you're doing these 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 drawings, because well, on the Pinterest boards, there's like faces are from different angles. There's you know people are from different race. There's gender difference on the on the board, although it mainly consists out of uh, of females is that there's slight differences between, for example, Caucasian and, you know, more Spanish or African uh, people. And what I found when I when I was looking at these uh, race or person specific um, uh, things is that there's, well, there's too much to to tell here, but some things I really found out is that for example, the tip of the nose is like a ball. So we have, I'm now I'm imagining, I'm not drawing like a two dimensional nose anymore, but I'm actually envisioning that the ball is like, uh, sorry, the nose is like a ball on the top. So it goes round and when the, um, and, and this creates a little bit more depth in the drawing. Another thing I found out is that girls, Compared to men, have rounder chins, so they're less. There's less square or corners on it. Another thing I found out is then when you're looking at dark skin. So when I'm putting in these small lines for the for the shading of the face, is that dark skins overall have a higher contrast and they're more reflective on light. So there's more. You could already, when you're drawing a Caucasian face, for example, and you want to give it a little bit more, um, 
uh, mixed race uh, feeling you could already put in some shading around the um, the nostrils of the of the nose or uh, around the eyes because this effect already gives the uh, um, putting in these small lines already gives the effect that the the, the nose is or the, the skin is reflective and thus more dark another thing i found out is that well this is really something that kept on bumming in into me each time i was drawing is that the 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 eye is a is a sphere so and before this i was i wasn't aware of this but i was literally drawing the the eye a lot of times as a two-dimensional thing but when i envision it at as it was a sphere so a three-dimensional thing i was literally drawing the eye totally different from an angle so when you're looking up to it you're actually following the the eye the eye sphere to draw the uh, you know the, the contour of it but while you're looking out from the side you could actually see the side of the eye as well so overall these are a couple of things i found out while, while i was doing the, uh, the the 50 mats challenge and overall it was a lot of fun doing the challenge and i would highly re recommend for you to uh, to do it as well so thanks for watching this video and if you like it give it a thumbs up and all that stuff and i'll uh, i'll see you next time see ya bye bye